Hey guys, it's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So today, what you're seeing and starting with here is a little bit unusual because I'm not actually at my desktop. I'm actually in the kitchen. And what we've actually got going on here is that uh, I'm going to be trying to do a bit of keyboard science and extending on some of the comments previously about the salt water separation method for ABS and PBT keycaps. So somebody had made the comment in one of my videos when I used the bucket of water on my desk to separate some DSA keycaps that you could make a saturated salt solution which would give you a very good differential between ABS keycaps and PBS, uh, PBT, sorry, PBS, PBT material due to the actual density between them. There is a density difference in just how the PBT is made in the formulation, but if you use a saturated salt solution, you're going to get a much better differential. So what I've got here is just a kilo of salt, and I've got just a stock pot. I'm going to fill it up with some hot water from the kettle, and then I'm actually going to take it to the boil, but we need to know how much liquid we're actually going to be able to put in, and therefore how much keycaps we can put in and float to separate. So what I've gone and done is I've had a look at the solubility of salt, and what we can see... Yes, Ariete? There's keycaps in there. Well, Daddy wants to put keycaps in there so he can separate them, okay? So, <clears throat> what we can see here is that at zero degrees, we're looking at 35.65 per 100 mils of water at that temperature. Now, you might be saying, how can you have water at zero degrees? Doesn't that freeze? Well, it does, but that is at standard room, well, sorry, at standard pressure. Whereas, scientifically speaking, you can manipulate your environmental uh, conditions by increasing pressure but keeping it at a certain temperature to do some high level science. So just don't worry too much about it being at zero, but we can see at 30 degrees it's 36.09 and 100 degrees it's 38.99. So for simplicity we're just going to go with 39 and we can see a kilo divided by 39 grams is 25.64 and it's per 100 mils. So we're looking at about two and a half liters at 100 degrees will be saturation. Once you get over that, it's oversaturated, it's not going to dissolve. But we need to ensure that when it comes down to room temperature, we're going to be in a good place. Because if you, I put in less, so if I actually put in uh, at 30 degrees, it's 36.9, which equals 27 or 2.7 liters. Now, if I put in too much water, say at 2.7 or 2.8 or 3 liters at 100 degrees, when it cools down to 30 degrees, it's no longer going to be saturated. So the density of the actual salt solution will not be correct. So what we're going to go with here is we're going to go with 2.5 liters. We're going to bring it to the boil. We're going to throw in the salt that I've got here, just some cheap table salt. I think it was like a dollar or something like that, two dollars for a packet. Let it cool down over a couple of hours because, of course, it's going to be very hot. And then we're going to come back for the next part, which is throwing in keycaps into hopefully this stock pot with some saturated salt solution and seeing what floats and what doesn't. So we're going to get some water in the kettle, bring it to the boil to make things speed up a bit, and we will see you on the other side of the stove top work. Catch you soon. Okay, so what we're seeing here right now is the salt solution that's been brought to a boil. It is completely saturated for how much water I've put into it because you can see on the surface, as the water is evaporating while it's trying to cool down, because I've got it just in a water bath now, the actual salt crystals are starting to crash out. So, fire, uh, you can see it's actually forming these salt crystals on the surface here, because it's hit saturation, it's not dissolving anymore, and as this cools down, I'm going to expect more and more of that salt to start forming on the surface while it's evaporating. What I can do, of course, later on, if I really, really want to, is I can probably top up a little bit of water, but it's probably not going to be accurate to measure, since there's going to be, you know, salt from the bottom, 
uh, I don't know how much water it's going to have lost, and so on and so forth. So we're just going to run with it, but once it cools down, all of that sort of salt suspended in the actual liquid should settle down. It should become relatively clear. So we'll let that sit for a couple of hours and then uh, see what that salt solution looks like before I test it with my infrared thermometer. And then we can start dumping some keycaps into it to see how well they float or don't float. All right, so we are back. It has been a couple of hours since I made this salt solution. Are you sick today? Yeah, you look sick. You sound a little bit sick. Is that why you're not at daycare today? Or why are you not at daycare? Because you're sick. Because you're sick. So, what I've said before is that this salt solution has now cooled off. And uh, with my infrared, it's about 25 degrees. So we should be expecting that the solubility has decreased by what about uh, four grams per hundred mil so as you can see a lot of the salt has now settled down into the bottom of this pot so that salt solution should be heavily saturated so what i've got now here hey 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 how are you t is the glass jug that i'm going to use this ladle and i'm just going to carefully start ladling some of this in and I'm going to fill up the pot not pot this jug and we're going to take it over to the sink where we can start throwing in some keycaps now I'm not too concerned about the fact that I'm not going to get any actual salt into the bottom of this only because it's so heavily saturated that you know there's salt crystals that is forming essentially on the surface of the liquid now and you can see there's you know salt crystals that are going in here anyway all these floaty bits uh, so and I've still got plenty of liquid in that pot so as I start scooping keycaps out it should not be oh, an issue for me to replenish that if I need to okay so it's a little bit cloudy it's because we've mixed it up a bit so let's just bring that over to the side here actually yeah I'm gonna put that here now I've got my bag well I've got a box which is grab bag keycaps that I previously sort of had a very quick look through and I'm gonna start just grabbing handfuls of these and chucking them in to this jug and whatever is floating is going to be ABS and I'll put them into one of the two sinks and whatever is not floating I'll grab them out and they will sit in the other sink and essentially be counted as PBT. Uh, I do have some kitchen bits and pieces, so let's just go with, say, that as a scoop. Something nice and simple. Oh, I'm just using this so I can get keycaps out when I scoop it, okay? okay? And of course, that will be nice and easy to go in so I don't get too wet. So I'm going to put the my phone down now. So we can actually see the floating and not floating. All right. So here we go. I'm just going to give that a bit of a, a plunge. Make sure that they're all sitting. And we can see straight away we've got a great separation between some of them. I can see on the camera. You can see on the camera, yeah, that's right. And you spit. Some yeah, I put some keycaps in there. That's right. Why are you keeping all the keycaps in the pot? There's still keycaps on the bottom. Yeah, there's still keycaps on the bottom. They're the heavier ones, Arietti. Oh, Daddy dropped one. Can you get that one for me, please? Thank you. All right. So here's another lot. They're all, yeah, they're sinking down. Those ones are heavy, and these ones are light. Yeah. 
So as far as experimentation goes, straight away we can see that uh, this is a very, very effective way of determining the difference between ABS and PVT keycaps. All the ones that uh, you would kind of expect to. The reason why I'm sort of plunging them is to make sure that any entrained air that could be potentially holding it up is just getting knocked Daddy, about. Look. Yeah, that's right. What's that? It's purple. It's a purple ring. That's right. Yeah. Like, I have a ring. You have a ring. And Owen too. And Owen? Yeah. Oh. Are you going to see Owen on the weekend? Yeah, with Evan and Charlotte. With Evan and Charlotte. Really? Yeah. Together and that'll be me too. And that'll be you too. Oh. Yeah. I'll play them with the circus. You're going to play with them with the circus? Yeah. Really? Oh. And, and the slide too. At the, the park. At the park? Yeah, with oh. my mommy. With your mommy? Yeah. Okay, so the proof of concept is pretty much there and demonstrated. We can see that there's a whole bunch of keycaps now sitting on the bottom, which is really great. Uh, I'll be able to pull them out. And chuck them in the other sink. Of course, with all of these, uh, I'm going to have to rinse them all and whatnot, but that's okay. It's just a bit of fun and a way of checking out that, uh, you know, keyboard science and separation. This is a surefire way to be able to differentiate between the two types of keycaps. Now, am I going to do this for the rest of the box? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's much value to doing it, but I guess if I want to understand how much PBT that I have, especially now that I know I can do laser die subbing of PBT keycaps using my little laser engraver, maybe, maybe. Plus the fact that I've gone and made all that salt solution, so maybe I should continue to do that. Daddy, yes, look, I'm your medicine. Yes, that's for your medicine. Bottom. Yeah, there's more going to the bottom. Do you need medicine? No. No, you don't need medicine right now. Maybe later. Yeah, maybe later. Maybe later. Yeah. It's kind of actually fun to uh, to be bobbing around with keycaps, but uh, yeah, there's definitely a very high proportion here of keycaps that are ABS. To Daddy, PBT. What, is this one? what is that one? Yeah. That one is a juicing machine. What's this one? That's part of the juicing machine as well. Yeah. Oh. oh no, you just dropped your medicine cup. You're going to have to wash that before we can use it again, okay? Okay. So I've got some uh, big SA space bars. Well, that one sank. That one's trying to float. So we know that this one is, this blue one is a ABS one. And this white one is a PBT one. Now of course we could probably have told that from the texture. But uh, that's a really good way. Oh, you've got your purple ring around your mouth. Your circle one, yeah. All right, well, I think this is gonna be the last handful that I do on the camera. But um, I just wanna say that Thank you very much uh, for the person who left me the comment and talked me through the whole thing about using salt water as a way of differentiating between the two types of materials. Uh, it's, as you can see, extremely effective, very simple, and of course, very cheap. Now, I don't know why you would want to or need to do this unless if you were trying to achieve what I was saying before in that you want to separate your keycaps because you want to do some die subbing or any other kind of material science. But if we actually scoop out what's left at the bottom here, the proportion of 
ABS to PVT is actually quite low. So for the number of handfuls that I've gone and put through, uh, somebody can obviously count that if they want to. Uh, you know, watch the video and actually count how many handfuls of keycaps I've put through. But um, I'll show you just in a second. Okay, so that's all the PBT that's come out. That's all the ABS that's come out. So you can see it's quite disproportionate in regards to the number of handfuls I've got out of the grab bag, out of the grab bag box that uh, is ABS to PBT. Yeah, you can see. So these ones are made out of a plastic called PBT. P B T, okay. And these are made out of a plastic called A B S. A B S. S. Yeah, A B S. Okay. Which ones do you like better? What color? You like those ones. Why do you like those ones better? You like them? Yeah. Oh, okay. Alrighty. Well, I think we'll end the video there. I guess I might as well do the rest of the actual box and then I'll have to wash and rinse all of these. Uh, I am thinking about having a bit of fun because I have so much salt solution now that rather than just flushing it all down the drain, I might get some keycaps and suspend them in the solution and see if I'll get some salt crystal growing on them. Like the old classic school experiments where you get like a bit of string and a toothpick. Yes, there are still keycaps. And then, you know, you can grow a big fat salt crystal. We'll see if we can get that happening maybe on a keycap. And, I don't know, call that keycap art, salt artisan, something like that. Anyway, if you like this kind of stuff, if you like this very simple keyboard science. Orange. Yeah, there is orange. Then, of course, please hit that like button. Please hit that share button. And please hit that subscribe button. And we'll try and make more keyboard related videos for you. Alright, well, thanks very much for checking out this video, and of course, as always, until next time, happy clacking. Daddy, why say happy clapping? I'm not saying happy clapping, I'm saying happy clacking. Happy clacking? <laughs>